Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today. So as I record this is spring and spring has definitely been late this year but I feel now we're definitely seeing the signs of spring. So I'm going to have a look around this woodland and what I'm hoping to capture today are signs of spring, perhaps focusing on the smaller details. It's really a case of just seeing what I can find but I'd like to find some spring flowers, maybe some bluebells. And yeah, just have a look around and try and capture a few nice photographs. So let's get going and see what I can find. So I've found quite a nice collection here of these small delicate flowers. They're lilac and they really stand out. They caught my attention. And off in the distance, we've got some bluebells behind them as well. So I don't think this is going to work taking in the, the whole scene. What I want to do is find uh, a single small flower that really looks nice. It's in good shape because some of them have probably been affected by insects and the weather and so on. So I'm going to really concentrate on one. Uh, some of them have got raindrops on them as well. And off in the distance, the bluebells, perhaps I'll get some of that colour behind it uh, just for nice effect so I'm going to spend a while here trying to find what I think is going to be the best composition and see if I can get something that's worth taking. So as you'll know if you've done this type of photography getting your camera into the correct position is absolutely vital to get a nice composition and you'll also know that if you're doing it handheld or even crouched behind a tripod it's not very comfortable on your body. Ideally I would like to use a tripod but with the lighting conditions that I've had in the last few minutes here I've been able to shoot it handheld without raising the ISO terribly high so no real need to use a tripod and I've got OIS stabilization on my lens turned on. So what I've decided to do is really concentrate on finding a nice flower just in front of me. So we've got a single stalk grows up and a number of flowers grow on those. So I've found one that really I like the look of just in front of me here and I've been trying to get the camera into position and get a nice composition incorporating some of the other lilac flowers but only really wanting that one to be pin sharp and I've decided to ignore the bluebells in the background uh, with regards to trying to get some blue in the photo deliberately if it appears then that's fine but once I've examined this scene it's been clear I need to prioritize getting a nice composition on these lilac flowers just in front of me so I've spent a little while here in various lighting conditions, there's been some rain, it's actually raining at the moment, but I'll show you the image that I've finally settled on. So I was just walking past this area here and the white caught my attention. Now someone can correct me if I'm wrong but I do believe that this is garlic. It certainly smells like it anyway. And this one here in particular caught my attention because it's a very nice round formation with all the white flowers. And just above it and to the left, the way I've got my camera positioned, is a nice leaf that just sort of folds over in the direction of that what I think is wild garlic. So I'm setting this one up on the tripod because it's fairly easy to get the tripod set up for this one. And also, as you may see, there's quite a lot of wind. So there's a lot of gusts of wind and that flower and the leaf are moving around quite a lot. So by framing up my composition on the tripod, I can wait until a moment such as now and then grab the shot using my cable release here. So I've got this one framed up. I think it's going to be a square, a one by one aspect ratio. And just important to capture it in the, the correct lighting conditions as well. So I'm going to take a couple more of this one and uh, I'll show you my favourite. 
So I think that last photograph that I captured, which I believe was of some garlic, will turn out quite nice. And I've now got my mind tuned in to hoping to capture an image of one or two bluebells. But the problem that I've got is that there's not a huge amount of them around, but some of them seem to be past their best and others seem to be not fully formed yet into the nice bluebell shape that we all know and love. And spring has been very difficult this year. It seems to be late and even though there's a lot of spring now starting to appear, certain things are late. Some trees are not getting any leaves at all. So it's very difficult to just get nice photographs and capture the things that you've got in mind, uh, that you've got in mind that you want to capture before you head out. Sometimes you find these things, sometimes you don't. But I'm going to keep looking around. I'm hopeful that I'll find a nice bluebell or two in a nice setting with some nice light and get a, a nice photograph but I wouldn't say the odds are looking good at the moment but fingers crossed I'll find something. So the expression searching for a needle in a haystack comes to mind. I found a few bluebells scattered around but as I talked about previously finding some that's in good condition and they're in a nice area and you can get a nice composition and there's decent light. It's just been an absolute nightmare uh, trying to find that. It's very, very difficult, but I have had some luck and I found these beautiful pink, what I believe are bluebells, but the pink colour really caught my attention and a few of them have a really nice shape to them. So I think there's definitely going to be a composition here which is going to let me capture a nice image. I'll get that one framed up. And I also think there's some of the more standard blue colour just behind me here. And I think there's a potential shot there. I found a couple which the bell uh, shape has formed quite nicely on. So I'm going to get set up and see what I can do with this scene first. Obviously very important when you're photographing any delicate flowers or moving around in a woodland in general is to try and not do any damage to your surroundings. So here I'm on an area which is already worn and I'm being as careful as possible not to do any damage. I've got my tripod set up in quite an awkward position but again the reason I'm using it for this shot is because the wind is picking up and I want to get my composition framed, set in stone so to speak, and then be ready just to take it when the wind and also the lighting conditions are optimal. So I've arranged these in terms of a composition which in a, in a manner which is very pleasing to my eye. I'm focusing on the, the blue bell which to me has got the best form which is going to be up nearer the top right of my image and we've got some other uh, ones down at the bottom left which are which have got nice form as well but they're going to be out of focus and it's just a case of getting it arranged nicely to suit my eye ensuring the camera is correctly focused on the spot that I want and deciding how much of the the photo that I want to be in focus obviously depth of field is going to be very shallow for a scene such as this using a telephoto lens so anyway I'm going to wait until the light is optimal and hopefully when the wind is very low I can have my ISO as low as possible I'll grab the shot and here's the result
that's going to be it for my time in this woodland. I've had a lot of fun. It's always nice to try and focus on the smaller details in the landscape instead of always trying to take in more when you're out doing landscape photography. And although it's fun, it's certainly challenging. I think I touched on earlier the challenges physically of being crouched on the ground or even laying down at times taking photographs. It takes its toll on your body. But it's also difficult getting the composition set up perfectly. Millimeters left, right, up and down always have a huge effect on your photographs when doing landscape photography. But especially in, in times such as this, when you're capturing the smaller details, these tiny movements can make or break a photograph. But anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.